from Christopher Nolan questioning the possibility of a sequel, to the rumor that Heath Ledger spent a month alone in a hotel room for his role. Here are some of the secret facts about the Dark Knight trilogy that I'm sure you didn't know. First, let's talk about how Nolan had no interest in Joker's origin story. Remember Jack Nicholson's Joker with his fleshed out backstory? Well, fast forward a few decades and we've got Joaquin Phoenix on stage winning an Oscar for playing a Joker with barely any background at all. But you know what's interesting? In Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, the Joker bursts onto the scene already fully formed. No origin story was needed. Why? Because the filmmaker wanted Joker to be an unpredictable and unstoppable force, an absolute in every sense of the word. So instead, he chose to explore the tragic transformation of Harvey Dent into Two-Face. Or maybe available to me, maybe they're available to other actors and they just weren't coming my way. <laughs> A character who starts out as a shining beacon of hope for the people of Gotham, only to become a villain of his own making. Well, it may not have been conventional, but it worked out just fine for the Joker's character, artistically played by Heath Ledger. Speaking of Ledger, the actor went to great lengths to play his character right. Let's face it, when it comes to comic book villains, the Joker is in a league of his own. From Jack Nicholson's iconic portrayal to Cesar Romero's campy antics, the role has attracted some serious talent over the years. Years. And when it came time to cast a Joker for the Dark Knight trilogy, names like Paul Bettany, Steve Carell, and Adrian Brody were all in the running. But Nolan had his sights set on Heath Ledger from the start, and it's easy to see why. What many people don't know is that Ledger went above and beyond to bring the Joker to life. He spent a month holed up in a hotel, perfecting everything from the character's voice to his posture. And if that wasn't enough, he even kept a diary in character as the Joker to really get inside his head. Head. Now that's what we call dedication to the craft. Another example of going all out would be Warner Brothers marketing Dark Knight. The Dark Knight trilogy didn't need any extra help when it comes to creating hype, but that didn't stop Warner Brothers from going all out with their marketing efforts. They launched a fake website for Harvey Dent that had fans scratching their heads, only to have it vandalized later on. Then came WhySoSerious.com, which quickly became a hub for all things Joker. Fans were sent on scavenger hunts to unlock new photos and goodies from the film. And remember how Star Wars fans used to buy tickets just to see the trailer for The Phantom Menace? Well, the team behind The Dark Knight pulled a similar trick by showing the full opening bank heist scene before IMAX screenings of I Am Legend. And they didn't skimp on the theater count either. The Dark Knight hit a whopping 4,366 theaters across the US and Canada, setting a new record in the process. All in all, it's clear that Warner Brothers wanted to make sure everyone knew about the Dark Knight's arrival, and they definitely succeeded. Nolan went to extreme lengths to protect the film's ending. While filming of The Dark Knight Rises, it seemed like every other day brought a new leaked photo or video from the set. The Hollywood director, knowing how much fans hate spoilers, took extreme measures to keep the movie's biggest secrets safe. In the behind the scenes of the Dark Knight trilogy documentary, Nolan revealed just how far he went to protect Bruce Wayne's funeral scene. He used a fake tombstone with a different name, Miranda Tate, and even came up with a brilliant idea that left us all scratching our heads. And get this, Christian Bale himself was in on the secret, attending the funeral scene in full Batman gear and mingling with the rest of the cast. We went as far as having Christian there on set that day so he would appear on the call sheet in case the call sheet leaked and in case there were long lens shots of the funeral. He would be there as a character as well, Nolan said. It just goes to show how seriously the American filmmaker took the secrecy surrounding his epic trilogy, and how committed he was to deliver a truly unforgettable experience for fans. So how did the cast of Dark Knight Rises react to the surprise ending? Anne Hathaway, who played Catwoman, was caught off guard and exclaimed, holy when she read the final pages of the screenplay. Even the stars of the movie weren't immune to the shock factor. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who played John Blake, knew from the start that his character would have a pivotal role in the conclusion of the trilogy. When he read the script, he was blown away by the importance of his character and the impact he would have on the story. For those who may not remember, the ending of the film revealed that Blake would take up the mantle of Batman after Bruce Wayne faked his death and retired from the superhero life. The final moments of the film show 
showed Blake discovering the Batcave and taking on the responsibility of keeping Gotham City safe. Gordon Levitt has praised the ending, calling it pretty much perfect, and recalling the excitement he felt when he first read the final pages of the script. The surprise twist and the passing of the torch to a new hero left audiences and the cast alike with a satisfying conclusion to the epic trilogy. Now, let's talk about how Nolan created the heart-pounding opening scene and censored a gruesome death. Christopher is no stranger to pushing the limits of practical effects in his films. And of course, The Dark Knight Rises is no exception. In fact, one of the movie's most heart-pounding stunts involved dropping a real plane from the sky and crashing it to the ground. You heard that right, and according to Nolan, it wasn't just any old plane, but a massive military aircraft was dropped from high above Scotland. Despite the risk involved, the shoot only took two days to complete. Although Nolan and his team spent months carefully planning and executing the stunt to ensure its success. But while the plane crash scene may have been one of the most talked about stunts in the movie, there was another scene that was so shocking it didn't even make it into the final cut. Matthew Modine's character, Peter Foley, meets a grisly fate at the hands of Marion Cotillard's Talia al Ghul, but the original death scene was deemed too violent for the film's PG-13 rating. Modine revealed in a 2020 interview that the scene was filmed using a stunt double, but the impact of Foley's body hitting the ground was so intense that Nolan deemed it sickening and cut it from the movie entirely. It just goes to show that even in the world of practical effects, sometimes less is more. While we're on the topic of things you didn't know, this one might infuriate you a bit. Did you know that Nolan wasn't sure he wanted to make a sequel? It was always a given that a sequel to Batman Begins would be in the works. But the 52-year-old British-American director was initially hesitant about the idea. Despite his success with the first film, he had never done a comic book movie or directed a sequel before. But Nolan eventually agreed to take on the project after expressing a strong interest in creating a Joker movie. One of the notable changes that Nolan made for the sequel, which would eventually become The Dark Knight, was to drop Batman from the title. No, oh, I mean, we've, uh, you know, Emma, Emma's produced says. all my films. I do everything she says <laughs> and good. never argue, and it's, it's, we don't bring our work home with it. This was seen as an indicator of the film's darker and more complex tone, as well as a departure from the more straightforward superhero movies that had come before it. Working closely with his brother Jonathan Nolan, Christopher delved deep into the Batman mythos to create their own unique version of the Joker character. Drawing inspiration from the character's earliest appearances in the Batman comics from 1940, the Nolans crafted a dark, twisted take on the villain that would become one of the most iconic portrayals in cinematic history. They also incorporated elements from Fritz Lang's 1933 film, The Testament of Dr. Mabuse, to add to the Joker's enigmatic and unpredictable nature. Nolan's love of the cinema and dedication to creating a truly cinematic experience was on full display in The Dark Knight, and it remains one of the most innovative and influential superhero movies ever made. That's it from me on the secret facts about the Dark Knight trilogy fans don't know.